20,000 years ago during the last ice age, North America was a world of ice and wind, a frozen steppe where only the largest and toughest animals could survive. The woolly mammoth was the undisputed giant of this icy realm. Huge fur-covered elephants that moved in tight family groups led by experienced matriarchs. Armed with tusks up to four meters long, these mammoths used ivory not just in battle, but to clear snow, access food, and defend their young. Each step crushed ice and snow, forging trails across the step. Herds of mammoths reshaped entire landscapes simply by moving through them. Their survival depended on finding enough grass and sedge beneath the ice. In a world locked in winter, every patch of exposed ground mattered. But the mammoths did not walk this world alone. Watching from the ridges was one of the Ice Age's most formidable predators, the short-faced bear. Unlike modern bears, Arctodus had unusually long legs and a lean athletic build, allowing it to move quickly over open ground in search of opportunity. Its sense of smell was extraordinary. Even at great distances, it could detect the scent of mammoth blood or weakness carried on the frozen wind. This predator, part hunter, part scavenger, used the wind itself as a guide, following faint traces of prey and opportunity across the steppe. For a giant like Arctotus, an adult mammoth was a dangerous target. But a calf that strayed even a little too far from its mother could become a moment of possibility. Arctotus advanced with surprising silence. For such a massive animal, each step was carefully placed, its weight distributed to mute the crunch of ice beneath its paws. It used every fold and shadow of the landscape as cover, slipping between rocks and low hills, closing the distance without drawing attention. Within the tight ring of adults, the mammoth calf was well protected. Yet even here, a simple misstep on ice could open a gap, however briefly. The matriarch rarely relaxed. Her eyes scanned the horizon for any movement out of place. A lifetime of experience taught her that danger often appeared without warning. Mammoth herds were not random groups. Their formation was deliberate, adults forming a living barrier while the young remained shielded within. From behind a low ridge, the bear waited for the winds to shift, tasting the air, calculating risk against hunger. A single gust of wind changed the herd's position, just enough to create a fleeting space in their defensive wall. For a predator like Arctotus, hesitation could mean starvation. Once it chose a target, every muscle committed to the chase. In an instant, stealth gave way to speed. The short-faced bear launched itself from concealment, closing the gap in a matter of seconds. The mammoths reacted almost as one. Alarm calls filled the air as adults swung into position to shield the stumbling calf. For a few terrifying moments, the predator committed fully, racing straight towards several tons of enraged mammoth. To reach the calf, the bear needed only a heartbeat more. The Ice Age often turned on moments just this small. But mammoth mothers were not passive. With a surge of force, the matriarch threw her weight into the path of the attacker. A direct hit from those tusks could shatter ribs or crush a skull. Even a giant predator could not afford such a mistake. Within seconds, the herd transformed into a living fortress. The calf disappeared behind a wall of ivory, bone, and unwavering resolve. The bear tried to probe for weakness, launching brief feints to see if the line would break, but the mammoths met every move with unified strength. Experience and memory guided the matriarch. She had seen predators circle before, and she knew that standing firm was often the best defense. On its own, Arctodus was a towering predator, but against several mammoth adults together, the odds shifted sharply against it. In that moment, the bear seemed to understand that this hunt would cost more than it could gain. Hunger urged it forward, but survival urged it to turn away. The predator withdrew, not as a defeated monster, 
but as a strategist. In the Ice Age, living to hunt another day mattered more than any single kill. As the mammoths moved on, their tracks told the story of a confrontation survived, but the struggle for food continued for every creature on this frozen plain. Elsewhere, the cold had already claimed another victim. A steppe bison, weakened by winter, had fallen, its body now an opportunity for others. This was where Arctotus truly excelled, not in dramatic battles, but in finding what the Ice Age had already taken. Its jaws and forelimbs were incredibly strong, easily tearing through frozen hide and sinew to reach the rich fat and muscle beneath. To smaller predators, the arrival of Arctotus meant one thing, retreat. Even when it had not made the kill, it often claimed the choicest share. In this harsh world, the short-faced bear survived by dominating carcasses, using its size and presence to secure what meat the Ice Age left behind. But as the Ice Age drew to a close, the climate began to change. Open steppe gave way to spreading forests, and the giants of the cold lost the world they were built for. Today, mammoths survive only as bones and tusks in museums, silent reminders of a time when ice and wind ruled continents. Beside them, the skeleton of Arctotus reveals a predator like no modern bear, a long-legged scavenger and hunter that once challenged the giants of its age. Though both vanished thousands of years ago, the woolly mammoth and the short-faced bear still shape our imagination. Two titans whose struggle to survive tells the story of a world forever lost to ice and time. <laughs>